Welcome to my channel English Literature. Today it is our third lecture on purple hibiscus. Okay. And it is also our last lecture. Today we will discuss about the theme of purple hibiscus. The first important theme of this novel is colonialism. The setting of the book is in post-colonial Nigeria. Nigeria gets independence from British colonization and proceeds in its way of freedom. The novel focuses on the variegated themes of post-colonial concepts and idealism. Papa feels colonialism is the cause of his education. And Papa is a, not only a strong supporter of uh, Christianity, but he is also the staunch follower of Western culture because he thinks that his Education. The cause of his education is due to the colonialism. If the colonizer did not come in, Af uh, in Nigeria, it is not possible for Papa to get educated. So from this belief, he just adores the colonialism, the colonial idealism and hates his own Igbo culture and beliefs. And due to the colonization of Nigeria, he gets the privilege to get highly educated. That was his point of view. So for him, colonialism is good. But Papa Nukuku Achike respects his hidden Igbo customs and cultures without bowing his head to the colonial power. So in one side of the colonization is Eugene, follower of Colonialism and on the other side that is Papa Nuku. So on the other hand, Mama is Mama's character. She is not only colonized, but she is recolonized. She is recolonized in the sense she is under the coloniz colonization and also under the double fettered by the social frame of patriarchy. The colonial patriarchy. The mama is doubly colonized. On the one hand, under the colonizer, Western culture, and on the other hand, her husband. Now, religion and belief. Religion in Chiamanda's novel, Purple Hibiscus, explores to two characters. On the one hand, Father Benedict is a wise man from England, and he represents orthodox religious rituals. His follower is Eugene. On the other side, Father Amadi, a friend of Aunt Ifuma, believes in his religion, but does not feel it mandatory to avoid and discard his own cultural and national roots for that. So that's why he, what he uh, did often, that he just mingle the song of church song with the his uh, own Igbo community uh, own hidden song. And that's why Father Eugene said that she must be, uh, we must pray for him. She must be otherwise cursed by God, etc., etc., etc. He is a modern and radical priest. He is representative of modern Nigeria. Now, the number three, the theme is freedom versus slavery. Though Nigeria was free then, people like Papa clung to their slavery as their privilege. So Nigeria was free, but the Nigerians was not free. The Nigerians like Papa was not free. They were under the colonized power, not directly, but indirectly and wholeheartedly. He tries to project his English attachment throughout the novel. He abandons the tradition of his community, speaking in British accent, and forces his children to do so. He gets angry if the children speak in Igbo language. So it may be the counter version of colonization. The new way to empower colonization in the minds of people. So number four is patriarchal autocracy. Papa represents the patriarchal autocracy in his family. And Chimamanda throughout the novel named Eugene and Beatrice as Papa and Mama. Very few times he just named uh, Beatrice or Eugene. Always Papa and 
mama because papa and mama they have no other identity except being the oppressor and the oppressed inside the social hierarchy inside the patriarchy they have just two role one oppressor and the other oppressed now violence is the most recurrent and powerful theme of the novel the government uses crackdowns to suppress the people's voice the cook if you read that you will find that and papa also uses violence okay papa also uses violence to strangulate his family and suppress the members under him he beats them tortures them mentally and physically he kicks calmly to unconsciousness pours hot water on her legs hits jaja with heavy missile and etc retribution okay throughout the novel mama suffers a lot and tolerates every kind of brutality from her husband but in the end she poisoned him to death and this is the retribution boss and bosslessness there is a constant clash between boss and bosslessness in this novel papa tries to suppress the voices of mama jaja and kambali but jaja rebels and when the siblings visit their aunt's house the free liberal ambiance of the new setting changes their perspective their voicelessness transform into the voice of protest and opinions okay so after their visit to aunt ifuma's house their voicelessness change into voice and mama who are the epitome of silence patience and tolerance okay see the epitome of silence patience and tolerance throughout the novel even at the end she kills papa as her inner was protest she is not outwardly protested she did her work very silently she just call and tells that their father is dead so she is a daring lady and does not feel afraid to protest to express her voice even at the cost of losing her university job it is about aunt ifuma okay aunt ifuma represent voice throughout the, her outspoken nature so aunt ifuma is outwardly spoken but betrays is inward what she thinks we no one in the novel knows that what she is planning she is planning to put pause in his, in her husband's tea and thus gradually she so what she does she does silently she does inwardly her rebellion her protest is in a silent way but if you must protest is outwardly she is outspoken she protest instantly she always expresses her voice her opinion and her suggestions hybridization the most important theme of this novel so what do we mean by hybridization it hybridization means bringing together bringing together two contradictory ideas or several themes in uh, just one under one sky that is hybridization bringing together mixing mingling so the entire novel is based on the concept of hybridization two voices one of eugene the dominant autocratic and the other of aunt ifuma's liberal outspoken they contact and class again two religious attitudes father amadi and father benedict one is conventional other is radical they also meet in the juncture so the contradictory conflicting voices meet in this novel Uh, and many a time again the children of papa and the children of aunt if you ma unite to give birth to the concept of hybridization parpe hibiscus itself is an example of hybridization from aunt if you ma's house jaja brings it to papa using house it was wrapped in black cellophane paper 
as well and he had loaded it in the refrigerator beneath bottles of Fanta. When he saw my puzzled look, Kambilis is saying this, he said they were not just sticks, they were stalks of purple hibiscus. He would give them to the gardener. It was stiff harmatan and the earth was thirsty. But Anifio said the stalks might take root and grow if they were watered regularly. That hibiscus did not like too much water, but they did not like to be too dry either. Okay. So, the next theme that we will discuss is silence. Silence prevails the novel as Papa Eugene tries to maintain his rule in the family. Silencing the voice of his wife, silence in the voice of his children. Silence becomes integrated with the characters of Kambali as he loses her part of speech and mumbles. She always mumbles, fumbles for words, keeps uh, silent. And her friends and an infamous daughter Amaka taunt her, take her as a snob, and she cannot express herself. The children and mama remain hushed most of the time and just mutter and mumble. They talk through their eyes. Now read this expert. We went upstairs to change Jaja and mama and I. Our steps on the stairs were measured and as silent as our Sundays. The silence of waiting until papa was done with his siesta so we could have lunch the silence of reflex sometime when papa gave us a scripture passage or a book by one of the hourly church fathers to read and meditate on the silence of evening rosary the silence of driving to the church for benediction afterwards even our family time on sundays was quiet without chess game or newspaper discussion more in truth tune with the day of rest so in this passage in this excerpt we get the use of silence and these two my uh, my silence uh, even their steps even they are walking in measured steps so later after her visit to anifimal house she will regain her voice and identity through her interaction with the others so this novel is also called and coming of age novel. So why this is called coming of age novel? Because coming of age is a genre of literature that telescopes the growth of a protagonist from childhood to adulthood. Purple Hibiscus by Chiamanda is a coming of age story as the narrator Kambali proceeds through the family disintegration towards her maturity. Kambali finds her identity, her maturity, her voice at the end of the novel. In Igbo, Kambili means let me live. So Kambili means let me live. Throughout her life, she tries to live under the vicious violence and suppression of her father. So when aunt uh, when she visits her aunt's house along with her brother, her perspective of life switches. There comes a radical change in her as she comes in contact with a broader world and a real world from her cloistered prison house of Papa. So from her cloistered prison house of her Papa, she comes to Aunt Ifuma's Freedom. Freedom House. Now it is Alvida's verdict. Actually, this is uh, Alvida is my pen name. I used to write a uh, book in this pen name and from then on I use that. Actually, there is a blog. Blog Alvina.com And in this blog, I write book reviews and I discuss about books. And that's why this uh, name is Alvina's verdict. It is actually my verdict and what I, uh, what I like about the novel, how I feel about after reading this novel. So Alvina's verdict is actually my verdict. And now go to this. If you want to um, go to
to blogalifia.com you can go there and you will find there is plethora of novels and book reviews you can there will be some of the novels will be helpful for academic reason and some are just for reading and you can go there if you like the novel makes me feel worthy worthy of being a reader the language and narration are so fluid without any vagueness that i can go simultaneously with kambali and revisit every situation that she faces along with the other characters very the facets of life like religion custom colonization patriarchal oppression rights and rituals the human search for identity collaborates and couples smartly under a perfect panorama to the eyes of a 12 years old girl we traverse the whole of nigeria perhaps the world continually getting corroded and crushed under the bigotry of human behavior and contradiction and this human behavior and contradiction that i am talking about is evident in the character of papa i like the ending most that i told you the squeezing of the cloud oh that fabulous phrase squeezing squeezing of the cloud the most for the positive note and promises just like a pictorial quality i can uh, see i can that's just perceive fill in front of my eyes the squeezing of the cloud and from silence and violence the novel lifts us towards new day new hope the jaja silence is laced with pathos it is kambali i hope for some wonders okay so we just finish the end purple hibiscus and if in your garden any of your garden there is purple hibiscus inform me i'll bring that to my garden next we will read about another novel and bye